Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an Impressionist Realist Painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosnan of Steve Brosnan's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J.K.L. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand and watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. Well, it's Monday again, and this is June the 29th, 2020. This is Clyde J. Kale, and you are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 52. That's right, folks. We have been recording these podcasts for 52 weeks, an entire year. So even though we've been meeting online a lot longer than that, but uh, it's nice that we reached uh, episode 52. And I am here with my best artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everyone. Hello, Diane. Our Constance. <laughs> Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hi, hello, everybody out there. Thanks like, for joining us. It's like I haven't been doing this for 52 weeks. And I still mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hello. I thought as a kind of a celebration for our listeners, which is we usually have some of the best conversations before we start the recording and then we get a little structured and uh, our conversations are basically, you know, how's our week going? What are accomplishments for the week and chickens and whatnot. (laughs) We just, and we just get carried away and I usually have to, okay, let's, let's, uh, let's calm down now. Let's start the recording up so we can get to the theme. So I thought we'd just record some, uh, you know, some of our chatter, you know, what we normally talk, you know, talk about uh, before we start the recording. And to start this out, we were talking about chickens. Constance was talking about uh, some of her chickens, her new chickens she's got. And you got, didn't you say you got some peacocks cocks too, or? Yeah, I got two peacocks, uh, blue shouldered peacocks. And I'm not sure if they're, both males or both females or male and female i'm hoping male and female but who knows when they're young you i just wanted the peacock so i threw my hand up at the auction and made sure i got them because <laughs> i love peacocks i used to raise them a long time ago and decided to get a, get whatever they had you know and start start a new flock Great. Um, for any of our new listeners uh both constance and diane they uh, live on and operate a farm, a lot of working farms, along with uh, being artists, which I think is pretty cool. I'm kind of envious. I mean, here I am in the big city, and they're out in that fresh air. And sometimes some of the things they talk about that happens on a farm reminds me occasionally of that old TV series, Green Acres. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, 
So, uh, Diane, how's your week going? What, uh, get anything accomplished that you, you know, set out to do or? I was going to try to get a painting started, which, which I kind of did, but I haven't really painted yet because uh, I was trying to set up cameras so that I can record what I'm doing and <laughs> I was having problems getting that to work. So I never got around to doing the painting part because I was fiddling with cameras and technical stuff <laughs> for so long I didn't have time to paint. So wow. I'm still working on that. I have I, I recorded some today <clears throat> and I was trying to... Um, find a program to put them together so that's what i'm working on at the moment okay and uh constance you sent me an e an email earlier in a week and said something about you had accomplished you completed that setup or something or yeah i sent you a photograph did you not get it no i didn't get the photo pho there was no photograph attached oh okay well i have to well anyway yeah. i did get my shadow box made the only thing is it's enormous and <laughs> it's a lot bigger than i it anticipated that it was going to be so i need to take it apart and maybe cut it down a little bit which is not bad i have a table saw um uh, it's just huge and um uh, so that's the only problem with it it's just a little bit bigger than i and anticipated it should be but it looks good, you know, so. Um, it might not be a bad thing. It might give you more space to set up, you know, mm -hmm. like a still life in it and yeah. get a bigger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Just because it's real big, you don't have to use the entire space. You can set the still, you know, the still life up mm -hmm. off to the side and uh, adjust the lighting, you know, so it uh, mm -hmm. yeah. reflects. Yeah. Uh, I might put another coat of black paint on it. I painted it with uh, with uh, black gesso, and it's very has a very absorbent black on it. So it's very you know it's but it needs another I think another coat of black on it to really you know be jet black. Yep, and it's but, more, more of a matte. Have you got a matte to it, or have you got a gloss on it? It's matte. I think it needs to be more of a semi, maybe not too semi gloss, but more or maybe a matte than semi. But a matte or uh, a, maybe a satin. A satin. Mm -hmm. I did have a I did have a dresser over there that had an enamel black on the top of it that I painted, and that was entirely too shiny. <laughs> so I need to do something that didn't that didn't all that shadow on the. Well, my uh, kind of hard to emulate in a painting. My three, uh, my first three uh, oil paintings that I did from from life. Uh, I'm a cheap guy. I just took a cardboard box and cut it and cut it out and set it up and then put some cloth on 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 the back of it. And that's how I you know got my set. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So and then when I paint it, I just don't paint the uh, you know the color of the cardboard i had you know i change the color you know which is kind of well, you can always get some fabric at from somewhere some black fabric and put that on it or a different colors of fabric and that's what I, I do have fabric that i put on stuff for different colors you know you can put different color on the back or just different colors yeah, well, actually, the last, the, sheets even the last two paintings i used a uh i i didn't have any fabric on it and but I went ahead and and faked it with a white, you know, a, a white, uh, you know, background, and was able to accomplish the shadows, you know, from the light just as if just like as if the fabric was there, you know. If I if I want if I wanted to uh, make it a like a silk or something, I would definitely need to look at you know at that because. Yeah, you, know, you can only fake something so far. <laughs> well, you can but go in the do, pill. Yeah, I huh? used to go to um, uh, like thrift stores and buy mm -hmm. old sheets or what. I mean, I wouldn't use them as sheets, but I use them like you know to as rags or use them for my paintings, like to as backdrops or whatever. Huh. You can get oh, you can get pillowcases. They're pretty inexpensive because I they brought them. Gray pillowcases from the house over here and use those. 
And one thing I want to say, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Constance. I can't say it enough. Uh, sure. Your recommendation of that bucket bucket brush or whatever. Bucket brush. <laughs> As you know, I I ordered, I took advantage of a sale they had where I got uh, 20 professional brushes for like $29, you know. Of course, they came in last week. I used them this week. Yes. It's, they're, I mean, they're the same. It's Winsor and Eaton brushes. I mean, it's not all, most of them are. I mean, it's a blend of different kinds of brushes, but. Different brands, but uh, the majority of those. It's Winsor and Eaton brushes, and that's gr they're great brushes. But I've used them in the with the uh, uh, oil painting and with uh, acrylic. You know, I, I specifically set aside so I don't get them mixed up. Which ones I've used is you know. And right, they have uh, the ones that I got. I had a they were Windsor Newton, but they were there were oil oil the bristles bristle hog bristles. Then they had acrylic brushes and they had watercolor brushes in there. That's what, I had some off brands in there, but still they were all in a different they were all really good brushes. Yeah, different sizes. And these are perfect you know, these are professional quality brushes. And, and you know, we we listen to a lot of uh Stefan Bauman's, you know, teachings and he always talks about, you know, you you may go cheap on the paint, but don't go cheap on the brush. Use a professional brush. And uh so that's like your sword, you know, your sword and he's right. <laughs> These it made a big difference. I could not believe it. I I never, you know, paid too much attention. You know, I always went cheap with the cheap Chinese made. You know, brushes you get. Well, the thing about it is, you have to use what you have to use until you can do a little bit better, and then, then when you can do a little bit better, then you do. You know, so everybody's been there. So when you first start out, you just have to do what you can do. And you know, even like plain air painters, sometimes you'll forget your brushes. Like you'll go out and you'll have all your stuff and you'll forget your brushes. So I've had, I've seen people use, you know, sticks, twigs off of trees, um, horse hair, and all kinds of different things they've tied onto their brushes to or onto a stick so they can have something to brush with. So anything can be used. It's not, you know. Doesn't have to be. Oh, I can see. I can see Constance chasing her cows down. Give me some of that hair. <laughs> I need the paint. <laughs> hey, depends on depends on the cow. If Maddie's out in the pasture, I'm not going out there anymore. That is one gigantic bovine we have out in our pasture. It would take two freezers for her to fill it up. I am not going back out there after she horned me. <laughs> Yeah, last time mean, Constance done, she got horned by her cow. I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> she is one gigantic bovine. I have respect for Miss Betty now. <laughs> <laughs> she could have hurt me if she really wanted to, but she just let me know that she didn't appreciate me being out there feeding her baby for her. <laughs> she had just teats to do it with. <laughs> so is that, so she just had not figured out how to, to latch on to, him, to her yet, you know, so. But is no, that is the baby off the bottle now or? Yeah, he's off the bottle. He's finally gotten on to her. He just hadn't figured out. She has odd teats and I don't know how else to put it. They're just not regular girls' teats. I don't know. They're odd. And all of them always have a hard time latching on to her, you know, until they do, you know, sometimes. And he had a hard time figuring out how to get a hold of her. So finally. You know, we had to feed him. We didn't want him to die of starvation before he figured it out. So <laughs> we have to help him along. I mean, we're not going to lose a calf just because she's got odd teeth. <laughs> yep. Diane, you haven't talked a while. How's your goats doing? Have you got any new goats? or, is, or uh... Uh, We didn't breed any this year. Probably will, um, will next fall. So maybe next spring we'll have some new ones. <clears throat> yes. But, Folks, uh, Diane had a wonderful picture. She used to put up on. I think it's still you still got it up on your Facebook as your profile picture, yeah. where you're painting and your goats are are, are hanging around. Yeah, <laughs> stealing my brushes, knocking the, knocking into the easel, yeah, help me paint. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, you two have you really you have interesting adventures. It's a it's a thrill <laughs> to you every. 
Yeah. I know if I tried to paint out in the pastures with my animals, I, Abigail would not let me paint. She would not let me paint. She is too curious a little donk to, she would not let me paint out there. She's always <laughs> nibbling. They were pesky for a while. It took me longer to paint than it normally does. <laughs> but once they figured out, you know, I was going to be there for a while and they all settled down and went and laid down or whatever, but mm -hmm. it took them a while. They had to all check it out and taste everything and <laughs> all that before they did that. But yeah. Oh, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, if you folks go to uh, www.talkartpodcast.com, that's talkartpodcast.com, you'll see some uh, recommend links. And Constance last week had mentioned she would like to talk about some uh, apps that she uses on her iPhone, artist-related uh, apps. So she sent me a bunch of them, about eight, I think, seven or eight. I, I only picked out two of them because she had indicated to decide these were her favorite. So I'm going to let Constance talk about her, uh, her apps. And if you, like I said, if you go to talkartpodcast.com, you'll see the links for the two apps. And uh, Constance, you're on the floor now. All right. Um, there, the two that you picked out, one, what, what did you call it? Wise? Wise photos. And the other. Wise photos. And I like wise photos because when you are, setting up your still life or going out to take photographs or even if you're setting up to do plein air and you want to try to figure out your composition. Um, Wise Photos has the um, golden ratio or yeah, the, the go to mean, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm, the gold and it has the, all the different different thing all the different the thirds rule of thirds and then there's the what the other one is the five is it the pi or phi or whatever i'm probably not pronouncing it correctly there is another third rule of thirds that but the thirds are moved a little tighter in the middle and then there's the um the fab my mind just went blank i had it the most fab fabarucci or fibonacci, fibonacci yeah. curl Curve. Let me find it. I'll look it. I'll find it. Which is also based on the on the uh, golden meme uh, standard. Oh, here it is. Nope, that's not it. Here, golden triangles is the one I was looking for. Oh, okay. that one is a, a good one too. And then there's the vanishing points and the frame framing depth, and just it has all those different things that you can look for to make a composition look right that you're looking for and you can take a photograph of to help you sort that out and um that it's to me it's just very helpful um then the other app that i like a lot because i've been rusty i went for 12 years without painting so there's a rust all over my thinking <laughs> while I'm, you know, and you have to think about all these things while you're setting up to paint because the setting up and getting ready is the main thing to do when you're getting started. You, that's just, if you don't get that part right, then the rest of it just falls apart when you're trying to do it. The, and then the, I have another app that's called Seed Value. And that one is great because it lets you see value in, you can see it in two, two, two level, three level, four level, and four levels, and that or continuum. So that really helps you to see if whatever you're fixing to paint has that great quality of of really darks and really lights, extreme light and darks in your composition because you need that in your composition um that's what makes a painting great is having that quality of light and the quality of dark in in the composition so you need to have that light because that's what we're you know that's what gives everything good form and it just you know it's just as good to have it in your paintings yeah. and then you can actually you know while you're working 
if you're getting stumped, you can you can just open that app and look to see where you're missing it. And you can actually take a picture of it if you want to, to for reference later, you know, to help you sort it out as you're going. They're all iPhone apps, right? I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I these probably are on Androids and stuff too. I, I mean. I didn't take the time to search, but that I'm. Right. So I'm, I imagine that these go for, go on other types of phones also, some of these. I yep. mean, I wouldn't think that they were just for iPhones. Well, I, I'm, I'm just an Android, you know, person. So they might have something compatible if they don't have that exact one. Yeah, but, right. you know, a lot of the apps, that's the thing that you don't always think of looking for an app for certain things like that. Like, and then you, you don't, you hate to spend the money if you don't know if it's going to work or not, you know, for what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. The maps are free. And so it's good to get you know advice from somebody else. You know, sort of using it. But here we are. We've been. We got fifty-two recorded episodes. I think that is outstanding. Diane's the one to point that out last week. I didn't even think about it. She's yeah. It's almost a week. I mean, it's a year's a year's worth of episodes. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So we got a year. Thought <laughs> when we started this, who would have thought? Exactly. Mm -hmm. We just kind of, you know, when I came, I remember when I came up with the idea. Uh, you know, both both of you kind of like deer in a headlight. Whoa. Uh huh. Definitely. What are we going to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> well, we always talk about yeah. Art. Cows, chickens, art, goats. I mean, <laughs> life. And I try, you know, for our listeners, so that it's not too boring. You know, I try to each week to try to uh, pick out the various uh, videos off of YouTube to give us some kind of a theme, some kind of a structure, so we're not completely um, jabbering like fools. Because I mean, we can just jabber away, but I don't know if people would necessarily, our listeners, would be interested in our uh, uh, off-recording conversations <laughs> when Constance gets to talking about Will, her husband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> she said, we won't go down that road and <laughs> we'll never listen to this anyhow so he <laughs> he does sometimes when i post it he will listen to it oh, really uh-oh <laughs> <laughs> i might uh, <laughs> if constant disappears next week He's... i know we'll uh, list, start listening <laughs> yeah he knows <laughs> <laughs> And just like one episode where we were talking about the, uh, what was it? You were talking about chicken hawks or snakes or something, trying to get after chickens. And then you go and you pull this gun up and out of right in front of the camera. My shotgun. Yeah. Right there in the studio, folks. So don't mess with this woman. Do not, <laughs> do not come down her road because you may get. It would not pay for you to mess with me, no. It wouldn't. It's Oklahoma. We have, we have care, license to carry here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, brother. That's true. Most country folk <laughs> are used to having. <laughs> Mm -hmm. you know, guns around and going hunting and stuff. So mm -hmm. I just think it's wonderful. You know, we're we're sophisticated professional artists, but we're still in our soul. We're still country folk. You know, I may be a, a, a sit live in a city, but hey, I was born and raised in a small town. as you know, country. So a lot of what uh, you two uh, talk about, I can relate to. My uh, my grandfather was a farmer, and I used to spend my summers, you know, on his farm, and guy uh, and had. A lot of fond fond memories, you know. <laughs> when I was young, I was raised in the city, well, the suburbs or whatever you want to call them. And um, in the summertime, I would go spend summers with my stepmother. I would spend summers with her mother out in Ella J, Georgia, and it was way out in the country, on a dirt road, and you'd have to drive back into her house. And I would go out there and sit on the po porch with her. Her and I call her. They called her Aunt Beanie, and Aunt Beanie would would sit out out there, and they have bushels and bushels of green beans and stuff, and we would clean them all day long, and can and clean and can and clean, and I just loved it. I just loved being out there. 
And I'd say this, I'd almost have to be kicked, carried out of there kicking and screaming. And I just said when I grew up, that's, I wanted to live out in the country. And so I, pretty much that's what I did. <laughs> I, I was born and, and raised, you know, in uh, Indiana. And I grew up in Indiana, which is a good portion of Indiana is a rural, and, you know, farm country. And, you know, in the summers, I used to uh, help my grandfather. Uh, he would uh, bell hay. You know, you know what I'm talking about where you have, uh-huh. you had to, yeah, on that. <laughs> bell, those square type bells, you know, uh-huh. so he would go along with the tractor and he'd have me and my uncles, we'd be walking behind the trailer and we'd have to pick up the bells and heave them onto the trailer, you know, and that's hard work. Yes. And as a result, when I was about 11, 12 years old, you know, I would do every, from then on every summer all the way up to my teens. And, um, my arms would be all scratched up and, and, <laughs> bleed, you know, and, and, uh, bleeding. And when I would go back to school one year, the first year that happened, when I went back to school, they sent me home telling my mother <laughs> that I had some kind of a rash, you know, that it was contagious. <laughs> and my mother had to take him and said, no, he just spent the summer working on his grandfather's farm. And that's from hay. Hey. <laughs> Because they would, because they would, they wouldn't heal all, you know. Because every day, you know, the wound overnight, the wounds would 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 kind of heal, scab up. But then the next day, they'd break open. I had all bloody arms all, you know, all summer long. You didn't wear a long sleeve shirt. Nope. You should wear. Oh gosh, you should wear a long sleeve shirt. And it gets in the summer. It gets really humid. It would just. Be- I know it does. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> My one of my uncles would, would uh, usually would be on the uh, on the wagon, and one time I heaved the bell, and he jumped off the wagon, and I thought, what the heck? Well, there was a snake in the bell. He saw. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see a grown? I mean, it is a grown man, and everyone's like snakes. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, you don't want to see one flying at you. That's for sure. <laughs> I'd have been dancing across the pasture if I've seen one. <laughs> I gotta share something with you guys. Uh, you know that painting I did of the uh, I call it titled Hope of the of the Eagle and the uh, Cardinal. Okay, I posted on Facebook, and usually the you know I get either likes or a little comment of "Well, that's beautiful" or "or uh, that looks nice" or you know, but never any real constructive. And I I don't ask for critiques because I don't know. I just. <laughs> Yeah, you have to be careful what you ask for. <laughs> People are, are nasty. But this individual gave me a critique. I didn't ask for it, but it was very, very nice. I'm going to read off to you. I printed it out so I could, you know, big letters so I could read it off to you. It is just I'm, it's such a joy as, as an artist when you can receive a insightful and a uh, uh, very uh, – uh, not just well that looks nice but an insight an insightful and educational critique and she wrote it has just enough lovingness to give it just the right amount softness but not too much to make it garish or overly sentimental just enough realism to make it an accurate and identifiable likeness but not too much so that it would look too harsh an eagle can look extremely intimidating but you gave it a fresh appearance. You didn't depreciate its strength, but helped to convey it in a more useful form than usual. I mean it when I say that your approach with this was unique. Isn't that wonderful? I mean, <laughs> I don't get that much of a detailed critique, you know? And I, either, I don't know if this person is, is a professional art critic or not or what, but it was in one of the forums, you know, one of the Facebook forums groups that I post to. And... It was, you know, I was just doing high fives and dancing around when I when I read that. That's why I decided to copy it and print it out, you know. And that's with that painting uh, titled Hope that I I uh, was in last week's uh, podcast, the visual uh, version that's put up on YouTube. I, uh, of the, uh, you know, the eagle with the, uh, the uh, American flag that's uh, got holes in it and torn and the um, cardinal you know that uh and uh i put a lot of effort into that painting so uh 
That's that's rewarding. That's very rewarding. Constance, didn't you say you got an announcement or something? Tell us tell us about yours before we wrap this up. Yes. Um I sold a pastel painting this week. Um I just it was on Etsy and it the painting is um what is it? I forget the name of the paint. It's about it's of some marshes in blue. It's called marshes. I think the name is marshes in bloom. And um, I got it sent off this morning. I don't like to leave anything in the mailbox here because it's on a highway. And um, and I told the guy I sent him a, a message saying that it was going to be out today. And he says he, he says it's very beautiful and he looks forward to receiving it. So I was excited. This was the original. This is the original. Yeah, it's the original. The original artwork. So, congratulations! I yes. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the first piece of artwork I've sold in a long time. Of course, I haven't really been pushing to sell any work artwork in a long time. But since I've started painting again, um, and showing again, it's the first piece. So that's I'm excited. Usually, I tell you what, when it rains, it pours. Because now that you've sold one, and you and you're gonna on your Etsy site, you're marking that as sold. Mm -hmm. You start marking that sold. You're you're selling another one here real soon. I'm I I, I guarantee you, you're gonna sell some other works coming up here. Right. People, right. Yeah. I left it up on the Faso site and put down that it was sold. And also on Daily Paintworks, you don't have to take them down. You can put. It, they put up a little red dot on there saying that it was sold. So I, I left it up and put a little red dot on it saying that it was sold. So good. I think that's a good thing. Um, All right. So. Well, before we wrap this up, we let's set our weekly goals. Diane, you want to continue with what you? <laughs> I'm still. I'm still. I've got to get that technical issue <laughs> sorted out and figure out how to do that. So that's what I'm going to continue to work on until I can get it you say you ironed were, out. Start, you're going to start recording your painting, maybe, or was you yeah, I've done some, you know, here and there before, but not usually the whole painting. So I was trying to get a record, do a recording of both my palette and the painting I'm working on so I can have like a split screen kind of thing. Or oh, maybe even cool. blend, put the two together somehow. But that's what I'm, the technical part of that is what I'm trying to figure out how to do that. So, right. yeah, sometimes that can be hairy. <laughs> and Const yeah, plus the audio. I have to get the audio on there, too. So Yeah, Constance, uh, after we're done tonight, send me a picture of your, uh, of your, your uh, what do you call it, your dark box or your. My shadow box. Shadow yeah. box, yeah. Send me a picture so I can include that in the um, uh video version of of this that we put up on the on the youtube and okay. I'm also folks if you want to really uh get an idea as to how far we've come all 52 episodes will be up there <laughs> on my on my channel on my youtube channel and you can uh, just sit back and put on auto play and enjoy yourself <laughs> <laughs> i yep. also had a thing um happen this week with my artwork the um maryland arts council I had gotten juried into their show, which was supposed to be hanging at, in um, in Baltimore, and um, it got canceled because of the virus. So, my they've been showing each artist paintings all for the whole month, I guess, or maybe even two months. And mine finally got posted today, so <laughs> it's on their um, the Maryland Arts Council um, Instagram and Facebook pages, and I think it's on their uh, website too. Yep. So. so, folks, be sure to check that out. She's got a uh, some wonderful. Uh, is it just one painting, or is it several? Yeah, it's just one painting. They only accepted one in the show. There was, um, I forget how many people entered, but um, I think there was only twenty six or something like that chosen. So, wow, from the whole state of Maryland. So it was pretty good. It would have been a nice show to have had because the governor was supposed to be there, the opening, and all that stuff, but. It didn't happen, so. I oh, know that's awful. This is the next, the next best thing, having everything online. <laughs> they canceled the state fair for Oklahoma this year. Yep, I, yep, I saw that. A they, lot of disappointments. A lot of things have gotten canceled. Well, you know, I was ready to go and have some artwork shown at the um, where I went for the plein air, can the Oklahoma, 
what Alpha Road Ta plein air thing in in the fall last year, and I was gonna ready all ready to take paintings up to put up there to show in the spring, and they canceled that. <laughs> it's like one cancellation right after the other. It's like, yeah. oh man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so anyway, you just gotta roll with the punches. That's it. Just roll, roll with the punches there. Roll with the punches because oh. when it opens up again, we'll just have to be ready. All right. Okay. Let's, Constance, yeah, uh, what was your goal for your new goal for this week? Uh, I Just to make paintings. Okay. I'm going to get some uh, still life set up. Maybe kind of tweak this shadow box and see if I can. Yeah, now that you got that shadow box, put the. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you guys yeah. give me a picture so I can include that in the uh, yeah. version. You know, and, uh, Hopefully rest this little back up and make sure it's better by next week. You know, <laughs> I, like I said, I was going to, you know, work on blog, blog post. I, I did get one blog post, you know, but I want to do oh, it. So this I week. I have one more thing to tell you. <laughs> okay. Tell us your one thing. I integrated my emails with MailChimp. I have now got 45 new contacts. Good. Contacts that didn't kick me. So that's 45 new contacts that I didn't have before in MailChimp. So I need to start working on a blog and yes. whatever that, you know. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yep. So I might be in contact with you later. Okay. <laughs> I'll help in that department. <laughs> yeah, I'll be glad. I'm not that great at it. <laughs> uh one thing that you can check out right now uh to help you with your grammar and your spelling there is a thing called grammarly yeah it's free and you can download it and it integrates with your uh, web browser so that uh it will you know come and it, it's great it has helped yeah me. i like grammarly it's helped me a lot i mean you know things that i wouldn't like uh I used to always include uh, the word art and the word work when I'm talking about artwork as two separate words. They're together. Artwork goes together. Grambly, every single time I do it, Grambly flags it. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, they flag me all the time for stuff that I do too because I've never been good at grammar or spelling or punctuation. <laughs> you know, they, they've got to keep trying to you know, upgrade to their premium service, but hey, the, the, the basic service. They think you need it. <laughs> <laughs> I know I need it, but not at this point in time. <laughs> hey, when I start selling some more artwork and start doing a, a more busy blog, I can afford to pay for it. But <laughs> did you hear that, folks? Diane took a swipe at me. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure I need it too because I'm terrible at that stuff too. I think it's a right brain, left but brain thing. You know, if you're... it might be. I don't know. <laughs> Well, and that one blog post that I did, uh, my excuse for not posting for so long was that I'm I'm not a good writer. So <laughs> I said that in the first sentence. I'm I'm not accustomed <laughs> to writing on a regular basis, you know. But I I was doing pretty good there for a while, about once a week, you know. So uh, I find it really hard to write too. I don't know why. It's just a, I guess it just uses a different part of your brain or something. It's just it not is. a comfortable thing to do. Yeah, I think that you're either one sided or the other and if you're good at one side then you're not that great at the other side so i'd rather be a, gr a better artist than a, you know it's just hard to be great at all of it you know exactly okay well let's wrap this episode up you've been listening to the artist friends podcast episode 52 for june the 29th and i've been here with uh constance and diane my two best artist friends, and I'm going to say goodbye to Diane and Constance. Bye-bye. Bye, Clyde. Bye, Constance. Good night, everyone. Good night, y'all. Stay tuned because I'm also going to include a bonus section. Earlier in the year, we had did some recordings of trying to do our little our little spill in the beginning <laughs> we talk about, and we did it. I'm going to call it the bloopers. So I got some blooper cuts that I'm going to include in. That's scary. <laughs> I don't remember that is they scary. <laughs> I think that will, uh, if you're uh, 
spirits are down or a little depressed, I think you'll get a kick out of listening to some of our bloopers. So that will come, that will be attached to the end of this episode. Good night, everybody, and thanks for listening. I've got the recording running because I'm just for the sake of just seeing how my new sound system, you know, works. <laughs> uh, let's, let's, Oops. let's do it. Okay. You guys remember how we, you know, we put our, our 30 second, you know, whatever. Uh, you ready? You guys ready? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Now wait. Uh, Constantly need your attention. She's all. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we'll do okay. Diane first, then we'll do Constance. Just like whenever, you know, first you just say, you know, uh, you know, you say your name and your, your website and your brief 30-second, you know, your, eleva- your elevator pitch, you know. Our elevator pitch, which consists of? What kind of art you do? Like your one-liner or? A little one-liner, yeah. And we- Oh, and your location. And your location, yeah, and your, you know. Who, what, when, and why? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Ever don't come out, we can do it again. I mean, I got the recording. Right. <laughs> I can cut out while we. We could be here all night. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Diane's going to be first and then constant. Okay, Diane. One. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Diane Hunt of Diane Hunt Studio. Um, my website's Diane Hunt Studio. Well, all my media is Diane Hunt Studio. Um, I am a painter of nature. Um, let's see, I guess connecting nature with my brush. I live in Maryland on the Eastern Shore and out in the countryside. Good show. Good, good. That's kind of all backwards. <laughs> You want you can do it again afterwards if you want. We need Constance. Okay, Constance. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of C. Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. And I guess that's it. You don't want to do it, talk about your paintings or anything? Or? Oh, I didn't know you. I can edit yeah. yeah. I also am an artist that paints. Um, I paint pastels and in oils sometimes. So. Okay. And I have an Etsy store at, at uh, C. Brosnan's Shop Etsy. Okay. Oh, no, that's not how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Try that again. <laughs> at, at Etsy shop Brosnans. See Brosnans. <laughs> I got your little card. I got it right here. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> okay. Now, 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 my turn. Hello, this is Clyde JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic renderings and seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot with a tight illustrative hand in watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. (laughs) Yeah, you you had that written down somewhere. (laughs) He did. He was prepared. We were not. Yeah, he's been practicing. He pulled that out of a bag on us. <laughs> you want to do it again? Because what I'm going to do, I'm going to edit this, and this is going to be like we talked about, you know, before each, the beginning of each podcast, you know, we're, uh, we'll edit that in. And uh, so, what, you going to do it again? You want to do it again? Constance? Yeah, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> to write a couple things down. Like I said, Trying to write my, the my. order. Hello, my name is Constance Brosnan, and I. Uh, oh crap! <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that was the best one. <laughs> <laughs> Class gonna be up all night editing. Oh, <laughs> my name is Constance, and I crap. Okay, I said I'm crap. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> Alright, you want to try it again? Go ahead. Yeah, let me do it again. <laughs> See if I can make it all the way through this time. Come on. Yeah. Glenn, you go next. <laughs> I gotta quit laughing. <laughs> I need to compose myself. <laughs> okay. Uh... Okay. Uh, let's see how it goes this time. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> hi, I'm Diane Hunt of Diane Hunt Studio. Um, I connect with nature through my brush, and I paint in oil and watercolor. I live in Maryland on the eastern shore out in the countryside. We really need to write these over. <laughs> one was better yeah. yeah yeah i'm trying to remember all the stuff i said i'll have to write it down and practice both the practices and redo them next week okay gosh go for it hello my name is constance brosen um uh, of Con steve brosen's jewelry designs um i live on a prairie in, in oklahoma and um I make jewelry. <laughs> I have an Etsy store at uh Etsy dot com shop C Brosnan's. And she scares chickens. She's <laughs> <laughs> probably scaring a few right now. <laughs> It's dark. They're all asleep. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, I'm not going to turn this into a podcast recording. This is just for our, but it's going to be funny to listen to it later later tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got, you could get something out of that what I just said. I didn't yeah. crack up through the whole thing. Grows up. At least she's got, she's like, she <laughs> <She's> can't freeze <laughs> up. She's yelling <laughs> I didn't get the Etsy dot com, dot com shop to see Bryson's in there though without cracking up. Yeah. Oh my god. It's too bad I had the card. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's so funny. She'll be back in a second. <laughs> oh, there she went. Yeah. It's too bad I didn't have a, take a screenshot real quick. <laughs> I know. The expression of her face is... <laughs> She was laughing. <laughs> uh, she comes back, cause then we'll, we'll wrap it up, wrap this up, you know. But, uh, she was laughing. That's funny. Anyhow, yeah. I, I oh, there she it. is. Did you see the, <laughs> like, your face, the expression? The photograph yeah. was so funny when you froze up. You were like halfway laughing. I was frozen <laughs> laughing. Yeah. You were laughing so hard, and we got you got froze that way. You froze. You up. guys were you guys were frozen to me. So <laughs> you had, <laughs> were we laughing? <laughs> oh, we were laughing at you. <laughs> <laughs> we were all laughing. Oh, that was funny. Okay, well, uh, I'm about ready to wrap this up here, but uh, it's almost time. Yeah, you want you want to give this a try one more time, or because I, I think I can get enough. I can get enough of an intro, decent. You know. <laughs> Out of what we got. paste it together. <laughs> I can edit, you know, out. I'm sitting here picking beads out of a big bag of beads. Yeah. <laughs> this is my blue bag. The blue bag, okay. Yeah. Oh, it's not all the blue beads that I have, but it's uh, what happens is when I'm making a blue stretchy bracelet, I'll throw all the blue bags of beads that I have together. Then just start putting them on a stretchy. But anyhow, since Constance, you're going to have to get into the game because you're now you're now uh, uh, you know dealing with two award-winning artists. So I'm <laughs> I've been an award-winning artist since I was in second or third grade. <laughs> I've been an award winner. I've been an award at a show before. I've never been awarded at a show. Before. Okay, you two. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> there. Excited about, I'm pretty, yeah, excited, excited about mine, you know, my award. I won an award on a show before. Where's my ribbon that I won at a show? <laughs> it's not in here. It's in my bedroom. <laughs> yeah, hey, out of, you know, 700 and... Uh, it wasn't a very big show, but I won it. It's a ribbon. <laughs> <laughs> 780-some artists, you know. That, uh, it counts. You know, and, and, uh, hey, I won an award for honorary mention for a huge pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> How many people can say that they won honorary, honorary mention for a huge pumpkin? Well, I did win. A What's the biggest a- pumpkin you've ever grown? I did I don't have it anymore, but I did win a third place ribbon for an oil oil. I grew a fifty pound pumpkin. Oil paint. <laughs> That's a big freaking pumpkin. I did when I was fourteen years old in a four H local four H competition. Okay. How big was your pumpkin? <laughs> so I oil paint. Oil paint. I won third place. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what for a pumpkin? No, for an oil paint. I did when I was fourteen years old. Yeah, in the four H. You've heard of four <laughs> Old painting of a pumpkin? No, it wasn't old painting of a pumpkin. <laughs> it's a pumpkin. She's on the pumpkin game. <laughs> because I won an award for growing this pumpkin. Not even October yet. <laughs> We're talking about awards. I won an award for growing a pumpkin. How many people can win an award for growing a pumpkin? I was a big freaking pumpkin. I couldn't even carry it, it was so big. I had to get... Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde Jade Kale. Participating artists Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde Jade Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronson at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, 
please email cjkale at signmystery-otr.com. If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.